more and more people become aware of the consequences of burning fossil fuels as a source of energy, many people have turned to the sun as an alternative and cleaner way of obtaining energy. As we can see from the statistics released by the Global Data Power Intelligence Center, the cumulative global solar photo will take installed capacity by region has increased since the year 2010 and is expected to increase further until the year 2030. Thus, Dye-sensitized solar cells or DSSCs have emerged as a prospective substitute of the present-day conventional silicon solar cells and this is due to its ability to exhibit high solar energy efficiency, low cost and simple fabrication process. In DSSCs, redox mediator is one of the key materials which play an important role to transfer an electron from the counter electrode to the ionized dye. Generally, Conventional silicon solar cells have been used to generate electricity from solar energy. Unfortunately, these cells are expensive and toxic. The working principle of DSSCs involves four basic steps, light absorption, electron injection, transportation of carrier and collection of current. Firstly, a photon is released from the sun which hits the dye. This causes the dye to eject electrons from its conjugated bond into the conduction band of titanium 4 oxide. The electrons then move through the titanium 4 oxide nanoparticles, exit the anode and move through the external circuit and reaches the counter electrode. The electrons at the counter electrode will then reduce a triiodide ion from the electrolyte to an iodide ion which travels toward the photoanode. The photoanode, the iodide ion donates the electron and undergoes oxidation to become a triiodide ion once again. The electron released is then accepted by the ionized dye molecule, thus completing the circuit. This process is repeated so that the solar cell continues to work. Basically, redox mediators in the SSCs are based on synthetic polymers such as polyethylene oxide, polyvinyl alcohol, and polyvinyl chloride. These synthetic polymers are not eco-friendly and are difficult to degrade. Thus, alternatives have been made by using biopolymers to replace synthetic polymers. In this work, we used cornstarch biopolymer as a polymer host. Cornstarch was chosen because cornstarch is a type of polysaccharide that has plenty of excessive electrons which play an important role for complexion with various salts to conduct ions. Besides, the use of biopolymers such as cornstarch as electrolyte host polymer for redox mediator is a step towards developing green technology to save the environment in line with the world's seventh sustainable development goal which is affordable and clean energy. Hence, the focus of this work is to prepare highly efficient and low-cost solar cells using cornstarch-based polymer electrolytes. Based on our literature, there is no report of using cornstarch in DSSCs and this is the first time that a DSSC is being fabricated using cornstarch. For the preparation of gel polymer electrolytes, cornstarch was used as a polymer host while DMSO was used as a plasticizer. Tetrabutyl ammonium iodide and iodine were used to form iodide triiodide redox mediator. Gel polymer electrolytes were prepared by dissolving 0.5 grams of cornstarch in a solution mixture of 4 grams of DMSO, 1.3976 grams of tetrabutyl ammonium iodide and 0.0960 iodine. The mixture was then stirred continuously at 80 degrees Celsius for 4 hours. Before fabricating the DSSC, the photoanode and counter electrodes must be repaired. The titanium dioxide dye photoanode was prepared by coating the titanium dioxide slurry prepared by grounding 0.5 grams of P25 titanium dioxide powder, 2 ml of nitric acid of pH 1.0, 0.1 grams of carbo wax and 1 drop of Triton X100 using the Dr. Blade method. The titanium dioxide coated electrode was then sintered at 450 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes and left to cool to room temperature before being immersed in 0.3 millimolar of N719 dye in ethanol for 24 hours at room temperature. The counter electrode was then prepared by brushing the plastisol solution on the fluorine tin oxide conducting glass. The coated substrate was then sintered at 450 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes. The DSSCs were fabricated by sandwiching the cornstarch based gel polymer electrolyte between the titanium dioxide dye photoanode and platinum counter electrode. The fabricated cell was then placed under a table lamp with a light intensity of 650 milliwatts per centimeter squared to test the potential of our prepared material. We have tested the DSSC by connecting it to a merry-go-round model. Let's take a look at the video. Then, 
we tested our DSSC with a multimeter to get the readings of 0.7 volts and 1.0 milliamperes. This means that it gives out an output power of 0.7 milliwatts. Next, we tested our DSSC under sunlight whereby we connected 3 cells to a solar panel. The voltage we got was about 1.9 volts and the current was 0.7 milliamperes. Now, let us briefly explain the calculation of the power delivered by the DSSC. Our sample size is 1 by 1 cm, which can deliver 0.7 milliwatts of power. To give an output power of 7 watts, we would need to have 1000 cells, which roughly translates to an area of 1 by 0.1 meters. If the area that we want to fill up with solar cells is 1 by 1 meters, which is equivalent to 1 meter squared, it will give out a power of 70 watts. If we want to use it on a roof and the roof is 10 meters squared, the DSSC will give an output power of 700 watts, which is enough for daily life. The estimated cost for a 1 meter squared DSSC is about 175 ringgit. This means that we can deliver a power of 700 watts for a long period of time at a cost of only 1750 ringgit. Cornstarch based gel polymer have been produced successfully. The gel electrolyte with composition of 0.5 grams of cornstarch revealed the highest power density of 0.772 milliwatts per centimeter squared, with voltage and current readings of 0.7 volts and 1.071 milliamperes respectively. This work shows that cornstarch has a great potential to be used in DSSC applications. In time, the Center of Foundation Studies for Agricultural Science, University Putra Malaysia for the financial support and UPNM for giving us the chance to participate in this competition.